thinking and then realized it wasn't the smartest thing to say? Well, that's what happens to me in my selection, things I wish I had not said. If I could learn to keep my mouth shut, my life would be less complicated. I have a knack for either saying the right thing at the wrong time or the wrong thing at the right time. Sometimes it's the wrong thing at the wrong time. <coughs> like the time I should have been quiet at Uncle Irwin's wedding. My mother calls Uncle Irwin the black sheep in the family and tolerates him only because he is my father's brother. Personally, Uncle Irwin is my favorite relative. He used to show up periodically and stay a few days. Then he would leave again, and we wouldn't hear from him for months and months. While he was with us, he showed me card tricks and taught me riddles. He came to my school's basketball game once, even though I only sat on the bench. At the end of each visit, he would always give me a $5 bill. He would fold it up small and hold it in his palm. And then when he said goodbye, he would shake my hand and slip me the money. He always winked, and I knew I wasn't supposed to tell anyone. It was for me to spend on whatever I wanted. Gummy bears, or baseball cards, a hot fudge sundaes, with nobody to suggest I save part of it. Once, I asked Uncle Irwin where he got all his money, and he told me he didn't have any. He said he borrowed from my dad, but he would repay it all back someday. When Uncle Irwin got married, we went to the wedding. While we waited for the service to begin, my mother said she was curious to know what sort of woman would choose to spend the rest of her life with Uncle Irwin. And I said, maybe she's rich, and now he'll be able to repay all the money he borrowed from Dad. As soon as I said it, I knew it was a mistake. Dad glared at me, and Mom glared at Dad. When they got home, they had a rousing fight. It seems that my mother did not know about the loans to Uncle Irwin, and she was none too happy to find out. I also should have kept my mouth shut when our next-door neighbors, the Crumpets, had their house for sale. I was outside riding my bike when some people came to look at the Crumpets' house. They stayed a long time, and then they walked all around the yard. There was a girl about my age with them, and after a while, she got tired of staring at the roof and came over to talk to me. She told me her parents might buy the Crumpets' house. She also told me she had a big white dog. I thought it would be great to have a kid my age next door, especially one with a dog. I've always wanted a dog but all I ever got were goldfish. I decided to tell the girl all the good things I could think about the Crumpets house. Then she could tell her parents, and maybe they would decide to buy it. First, I told her how the basement floods each spring, and she can sail boats down there. Our basement floods too, but not as much as the Crumpets. I've always wanted to sail my boats in their basement. I said maybe we could even have boat races. Next, I told her how all the kids in the area played kick the can during the summer. We always play in our block because the trees and hedges make great hiding places. The games usually go on long after it gets dark, and since the streetlight is right in front of the Crumpets' house, that's always home base. I told her she'd never miss any of the fun. She couldn't help but hear us right in front of her house. I also told her there's a fire station just around the corner, and we can hear the fire sirens go off. It's exciting at night, I told her. The fire sirens wake you up, and you can watch out the window and see the engines go by. The more I talked, the more I could tell she really liked the idea of living in the Crumpets' house. I was sure I'd help Mr. Crumpet make the sale. I could hardly wait for the new people and their dog to move in. The next day, Mr. Crumpet came over. I thought he was going to thank me, or maybe even offer me a reward for my help. Sort of like a sales commission. He didn't offer me a reward. And he didn't thank me either. He was furious. He told my parents that his house had been sold, but the buyers changed their minds after I told them that the house had a drainage problem and the neighborhood was too noisy. I protested I was only trying to help, but he didn't believe me. I was forbidden to talk to any other prospective buyers. The people who eventually bought the house are crabby and have no pets. They don't even have any kids. They complained so much about our kick the can games that we finally had to move one block over where the hiding places aren't as good. If any other house is put up for sale, I won't say one word to any prospective buyers. I won't even mention how the electricity goes off all the time during the winter and we get to eat by candlelight and not do our homework. The buyers will just have to discover the good things for themselves.